Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we're going to be looking at the topic Organic Chemistry 2 and our subtopic for today is the preparation of alcohols or alkanols. So you see how um, alkanols are prepared uh, not only in the lab but also industrially and then we are going to look at the properties later on. So uh, alkanols are prepared by different methods. One of the methods in which they are prepared is by hydrolysis of hydrogen, alkane, uh, hydrogen, uh, hydrogen alkanes are compounds in which one or more hydrogen atoms in the atom in the atoms in the alkane is replaced by an allergen. So addition of aqueous sodium hydroxide or uh, potassium hydroxide to the halo, halogen halo alkane and heating resort to corresponding halo alcohol. So we are doing like a replacement uh, of um, the OH with the uh, hydrogen in the alkane. So the reaction involves replacement of the allergen atoms with the OH. So remember, this is an alkene that has already reacted with the halogens to form um, halogen alkene. So after that, now the allergen alkene is the one that reacts with the base. For example, so when you look at the preparation of methanol, for example, you see we, we are using um, chloromethane. You see this is a methane with a chlorine a substituent. So if you react this with sodium hydroxide, there is like an interchange of the anions, that is the chloride ion and the OH. So we form methanol and sodium chloride in turn. Another example is the preparation of propanol. So if we uh, react one bromopropane with potassium hydroxide, we there's an interchange of the OH ions with the bromide ions to form propanol and potassium bromide is formed in the process. So the con conversion of hydrogen alkane to alcohol is usually referred to as hydrolysis. So keep that in mind because also later on we'll discover another hydrolysis method. So reagent in this case is the alkali and the condition uh, for this reaction is heat. And then another method is the hydration of alkenes. So we just finished the hydrolysis of hydro haloalkenes. So now we go to another method which is the hydration of alkenes. So the conversion of an alkene to alcohol is referred to as hydration. So you see the difference between hydrolysis and hydration. So the main reagent for this reaction is water and then the conditions are having an acid catalyst which can be either concentrated sulfuric acid or phosphoric acid. So and then temperatures we have 80 degrees Celsius and pressures of about 25 to 30 degrees Celsius to so 30 atmospheres. Examples for example if we want to prepare ethanol from ethene, so you react um, ethene with steam, uh, with water or steam in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid under those conditions and we get uh, ethanol in the process. Preparation of butanol, we use butene and in this case we are using phosphoric acid, so it's another alternative to the acid that we use to form um, the butanol. And then there's uh, the third method of preparation of alcohol is fermentation. So this is the most common method of preparation of alcohols. It's majorly used for industrial purposes. And also the previous hydrolysis method is also used uh, industrially because the fermentation method is very slow as you notice, uh, as we're going to discuss, but the hydrolysis method is faster. So that is the reason why it is preferred, especially in large scale. So it is prepared from the fermentation of starch or sugars in the presence of yeast. So basically it's the breakdown of starch or sugars in the presence of yeast. That is what we refer to as the fermentation. 
So for example, we have glucose that is uh, fermented in presence of this enzyme to form uh, ethanol and carbon dioxide is formed in the presence. So some of the conditions for fermentation to occur is temperatures. You can see it's around the room temperatures and then there needs to be yeast and also absence of oxygen. So fermentation uh, provides about 10% of uh, alcohol by volume. So the concentration of the horizontal ethanol you can be increased by fractional distillation, which we discussed in form one. So during the process, ethanol distills fast because it has low uh, boiling point. Uh, and then the distillate is at below 95 degrees Celsius, it's collected, leaving water behind. Um, the resultant fraction will have around 95% alcohol by volume. So you can see the alcohol amount you are producing through fermentation method is not uh, that large percent. It needs to undergo more reactions, that is distillation, for it to be, com to be higher percent. So you see this method in the end may not be economical if you want to produce large quantities of ethanol. So absolute ethanol, which is around 99.5% uh, per, per volume, may be obtained by distilling again, so redistillation of the refined ethanol. So this that we have gotten in the previous, we can distill it again to remove more water in the mixture. So some of the properties of alcohols, and in this case it might be ethanol or across. So ethanol is a colorless and volatile liquid which is soluble in water in all proportions, forming a neutral solution. It has a characteristic smell and boils at 78.5 degrees Celsius. So ethanol, when you dissolve it in water, it dissociates slightly. So when you look at the structure of ethanol, so when you put this in water, what happens is the hydrogen ions are separated from the structure slightly. So you notice if you were to measure the pH of an alcohol, it will be slightly below the neutral state. That's the reason why you notice ethanol or alcohols react with some metals as you later on look in. So the solubility of alkanos decreases with increase in the molecular mass. So the bigger the molecular mass uh, means that that alkanol is not going to decrease. And also the melting point increases with increase in the molecular mass because we said the bigger the molecule, the stronger the Vardawas forces, just like we said with alkanes and alkenes. So alkanos usually have a higher melting point and boiling point than the corresponding alkanes in the same molecular formula because they form hydrogen bonds. So apart from the Van der Waals forces that are formed between the molecules, they have extra bonds we refer to as hydrogen bonds. These hydrogen bonds form between the oxygen of one molecule and the hydrogen of another molecule. So because of the partial negative, oxygen attracts the partial positive hydrogen of another molecule. This causes the formation of hydrogen bond, which is much stronger than the Van der Waals forces. So that's the reason why you notice the melting point and boiling point are a bit higher than those of the corresponding alkenes and alkenes. So if we look at the general properties of alcohols, you can see the properties we have just mentioned. So you can see the molecular formula is increasing uh, down the series and the molecular mass is increasing, which directly affects the boiling point. You can see it is increasing as you go down the group and also the melting point uh, increases as you go down the group. You know that we require a lot more heat to separate, to heat the, to break the Van der Waals forces uh, between the molecules. And we said that Van der Waals forces are becoming stronger as the size of the molecule increases. And you can see solubility also decreases as it goes down the group. 
This doesn't mean um, that they do not dissolve in water. They do, but the size of the molecule interferes. So the bigger the molecule, when you look at the alignment of the molecule so that they can be able to form hydrogen bonds with others, it becomes different as it becomes bigger. It becomes harder to form hydrogen bonds with water because of the alignment, because the, the molecule is large. That is the reason why the solubility decreases as the size of the molecule increases. So that brings us to the end in terms of preparation of alcohols. So in the next lesson, we are going to be looking at the properties of alcohols. So see you in the next lesson.